Oh my gosh, I have a million memories because I taught for so long. Um, I love teaching. Um, I didn't love the politics of teaching, like there's never enough money, there are never enough books, you can never do what you want, you've got to fill out 500 forms, you can't touch kids, you can't you know, have your door closed when they're in there. I, all those rules and regs I didn't like and all the testing uh, toward the end of my career. But I loved um, that you guys teach us a lot. I love that you guys, I think, in the eighth grade, I taught eighth grade, um, in the eighth grade are so curious about life and you're not afraid to ask. And I hope you're not afraid to ask. I hope you always ask what you're wondering about, uh, even if you might sound, you think you sound stupid, but you really aren't. Um, because all questions are good questions. And, and that's what I really loved about teaching is that eighth graders aren't so cool that they don't ask or they don't get excited about things. Or um, we used to talk about the news all the time because I taught history. And things would come up just about life in the newspaper and kids, things that kids never really knew for sure about. And so they'd ask these questions and we would end up talking about all kinds of stuff that had nothing to do with history, but that did have to do about life. And I think that's what I like teaching, uh, about teaching the most, is that I could share um, my knowledge with kids and their curiosity about just living. Because, you know, you guys have to act so one way or the other for your kids, for your friends not to make fun of you or other people not to make fun of you. But, Hopefully you all have someone that you can go to that you can just be yourself and ask what you don't understand. You know, a, a lot of people say, oh my God, aren't the kids horrible nowadays toward my last years of teaching? And I didn't find you kids really any different. You're, you were still, some of you were tall and good looking and buff and good athletes and some of you were little dorky, nerdy kind of kids or you felt like you were. Um, some of you, you know, were like Mr. Cool and others of you were, you know, Miss Popular, but what's popular? Nobody really knows what popular is. Um, some kids were really rude. My first year teaching, someone stood up and called me the B word. She, he just stood up and said, you B. And I was like, you know, 22 or 3. I, I, my heart was broken. How could anyone call me that? <laughs> But toward the end of my career, some kids would say it not out loud like he did way back when, but he quietly, I mean, you know, so I don't know the kids change so much as the kinds of stuff you kids have. I think the things you have are in some ways scarier. Um, when I first started teaching, kids smoked and they sometimes drank or sometimes they would try, you know, drugs. But you guys have other stuff that I think make connecting harder, like your phones. Oh my God, your phones and the internet, which is scary. And I, I, I don't know that kids your age really realize how, um, ew, how treacherous those things can be. It's not that they're bad. They're not bad at all. They're great. I think you kids can learn all kinds of wonderful things through the internet, but, um, Things that you put online or that you say online or that you see online can really, I think, damage you. And you don't even know it's damaging you. And um, so kids, I think, are the same and have been the same all this time. Uh, some of your parents worry a whole lot about you and are more involved with the school, which is good and bad, because um, they don't give you enough enough um, enough space. It's like they're always watching over you and it's like they need to let go a little bit. I think parents have always been protective, but they seem extra, extra protected, maybe because they're afraid because of all this stuff that you hear about that could happen to you. Um, but I think kids, for the most part, are pretty much the same. You still have the same fears. You're all beautiful. Look at you. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> and. But none of you believe that. You all think, oh, God, no, I'm not, you know. Oh. But you are. It, I think you're at your 
you're, you're entering your peak years as far as beauty goes in, in terms of your looks, your mind, um, what you have to offer people, your kindness. Kids in middle school are so kind, not to each other maybe, but you know, if you saw someone hurt, you guys would be the first ones over there to help. I know you would because that's, that's the beauty of middle school. You still have big open hearts. Peace, love, and tie-dye. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. We need more understanding of each other. We need more tolerance of one another. Um, you know, we all want to be, I don't know what we all want to be. Um, I, it's like you're, people are so afraid of losing power, I guess that they're always fighting with one another. They're, you know, they fight about religion, they fight about, they fight and cheat for what they think they want to achieve as a way to get it, and that's really not the way. And I think, I think we need more interchanges with people of all ages. Um, I don't know how many of you have grandparents around, but you know, I think you need to spend time with them and they with you, and some of you do that. But a lot of us are just not interested because it, we feel like, oh, I don't need my grandparent or I don't need that weird neighbor I have. He's weird. I don't want to even talk to him. And I think we need to open our hearts to each other and see, see the good that everyone has in them. And that'll lead to peace because all this war and fighting and um, Please don't ever join the service, any of you. I mean, I love this country, but I, I, to see young people die is just heartbreaking. And I hope, uh, I hope you don't have to put yourselves in that position ever. Hello, my name is Stephanie Poito. Hello, I'm Marisol Sanchez. Hello, I'm Ruby Kessner. My name is Victor Guzman. My name is Alex Hernandez.